take time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends, in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. This is our prayer for you. We have one to serve. One, two, go. May the God of holiness bless you. Can you say amen? Amen. Number two. May God keep you in his holiness. Can you say amen? amen? Number three. May God make his holy face to shine upon you. Amen. Number four. May the holy God be gracious unto you. Amen. Number five. May God lift up his holy countenance upon you. Amen. Number six. May God give you peace, holiness, and heaven. Amen. Number seven. Go. Prosper in the Christian life and ministry. In the holy name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And let us say Amen. This prayer will be answered on you here. When you are going back, you will just see that heavenly spirit has taken over your life. When you will be going back, holiness will be going with you. Righteousness this will be going with you. The good God will shine his holy face upon all of us in Jesus' name. Something more than gold. Something more than gold. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than more than God. You need it more than gold. You need it more than silver. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than God. More than God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The word of God in the heart of man. We need it more than gold. I say you need it more than silver. 
The word of God in the life of man is something more than God. Amen. Go. Shiva, the word of God in the heart of man. Something more than gold. Something more than gold. Something more than money. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. Amen. More than gold. Silver, the word of God in the heart of man. Something more than gold. I say you need it more than gold. You need it more than money. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than God. Brother, more than God. Your hand, the word of God is more than God. It's more than the honor of the world. It's more than the treasure of the world. Brother, you need it more than gold. You need it more than money. The word of God in the life of man is something more than gold. Amen. Ask God for it. I want your word in my life. Let your word come to me. I value it more than gold. I value it more than money. More than honor. More than wealth. More than beauty. More than whatever the world can offer. Hey Lord Jehovah God. We value your word. We value your word. We value your word. It is more than gold unto us. It's more than money. Lord, it is more than money. Your word is more than money. I appreciate your word. I ask for your word. I want your word in my life. I want your word, oh my God. I want your word. I am here for it. I am here for it. I am here, Lord, for your word. 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 Give me your word. Give me your word. Oh, Lord, we need your word. Oh, Lord, we need your word. Jehovah, speak, we shall hear. And things shall happen in our lives. We shall conform. We shall transform. Yes, Lord. Speak thy word. Your servant shall be healed. Your servant shall be saved. Your servant shall be delivered. Your will will be done, Lord divine. Speak the word. The word of authority. The word of life. The words that I speak unto you. They are spirit and they are life. They are spirit. And they are alive. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, by the world you created the universe. Things seen and things not seen with the naked eye. How great you are. How mighty, Lord Jesus, you are the eternal word. Bless God. The, the word, the Bible says that the light shine in darkness. 
And that was because of the spoken word. You will speak forth your word today. Darkness will disappear. In the lives of your people. You will speak your word and there is going to be creation. There will be creation. Lives will be created. In the name of Jesus. You will speak the word. And the devils will vanish. The powers of evil will be melted. By the power of your word. I bless you for your word. Everybody wait for God and bless him for his word. We bless you divine. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus name we pray. The Lord will speak his word. Now. We are taking, you can sit down. We are taking the message. The divine God wants to speak to you. Marvelous. The God that spoke and the worlds were made. It's now you he wants to speak to. He that commanded and so it was The one that said Let there be and their words Is now talking to you You become his concern So he wants to have a talk with you Are you interested? Yes. Are you ready for it? Yes. Or you are happy You are afraid Only enemies of God will be afraid Because while his work is tough and strong to the enemy because it's, do, it's, it's double edged it is very wonderful and sweet sweeter than honey to his children which way do you want him to speak do you want, to, you want him to speak the tough word or the one that is so sweet so fine that makes you joyful I think that's the one you want to hear because your children, is that so? Amen. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 40. Ezekiel, chapter 40. I read verse 2. From verse 2. In the visions of God, brought he me into the land of Israel. And set me upon a very high mountain by which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me hither, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flux in his hand. And a measuring reed. And he stood in the gate. And the man said unto me, Son of man, Behold with thine eyes. And hear with thine ears. And set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee as thou brought it up. Declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. You can understand. God laid Ezekiel to a place And he told Ezekiel, I have brought you here for a purpose. I am going to make you see. I am going to make you hear. It is for what I will show you that you are here. There's a purpose. This God, the divine God, loves you so much. You can imagine where he has brought you. He has promised to do good to you. 
to show you love to show you kindness i want you to see coming to this place as part of the kindness of god to your life yes and he has called you with a holy calling for the for the purpose of heaven he called you for heaven if the call is for holiness see him leading you to holy places he meant business to take you to heaven he has brought you to himself the lord is the man with the major and reeds he has brought you to himself here you will see god he brought you and he's going to facilitate what is going on here with you it is like the marriage supper that you sit on the table you see jesus beside you everybody sees jesus beside him you will see jesus beside you here he has brought you here why he said he wants to speak to you don't allow sleep sleep will be an enemy abraham never allowed sleep to come on his way when you offer sacrifice before god he never allowed because we mean sleep the enemy saw some ties around them the enemy takes away some precious things from them therefore he said open your eyes and see well don't sleep this is not a place for it and he said open your ears and hear well open your ears open your ears to god don't be interested in stories that are not coming from god don't be don't come and find a friend maybe a visitor that comes from city and just telling you stories he is not in divine program for you here the pro, what god wants you to hear is what he is going to give you commission upon therefore open your ears and hear then he said be attentive be committed to what is going on here elijah said to elisha you have made a great request yet it can be done however i give you a condition if you see me go it shall be done if you become careless and allow things to take you to the left and take you to the right and you, are, you don't eventually see me go you will not have it what's your own desire you want to have it or miss it you want to have it or miss it be attentive committed the lord is telling you for the intent that i may show you these things i may speak to you have i brought you here so it's a personal matter you are here in the midst of many but actually you're here alone because god brought you here alone he will be dealing with you alone yes that's what the lord is saying you came to improve your relationship with god and to receive grace for better service for him god himself shall be your minister god shall inspire the pre the word for you according to his will in jesus name now what actually does god want to talk to you about he wants you know he had a time with jonah 
and the time God had with Jonah did a great work. In fact, was responsible for Jonah's being in heaven today. And so God wants to have time with you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life. And you will dwell in heaven forever. And it's because of heaven the Lord brought you here. Now, how did he deal with Jonah? In the book of Jonah, chapter 4. Jonah chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore, fled, I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repented thee of the evil. Therefore, now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. For it is better for me to die than to live. Now, everybody, let's Read that word. God spoke to Jonah in verse 4. Verse 4. One, two, go. Then said the Lord, Doest thou well to be angry? Jonah was into ministry, but he had bad manners, he had bad character. He was self-willed and rebellious. He had no compassion for his enemies. In fact, he was hindering God's love from reaching others. Besides all this, he was an angry man. Jonah was an angry man. Bad manner. And so the Lord had to arrange the circumstance to meet with him so he could change Jonah. Can you see? God arranged this. Was God saving Nineveh through Jonah? Jonah was not aware that mission was for his salvation. If Jonah would go to heaven, Jonah must go to Nineveh because the Lord had arranged that circumstance to change his bad character. That character must be changed. Jonah was an angry man. Was an angry man. See it. The Lord had to ask him, do you have, are you justified Jonah of this your anger? Now, patient God. That's what Jonah really said. I knew you. You were too patient. Jonah, that patience is over your life. That patience you are rejecting God from showing it to others actually is on you. You ran away. What if he had left you? You would never have been in heaven today. With all these provocations, what if he had judged you? You would perish forever. You are complaining of God's patience, being too patient? It is over you, Jonah. It's over you. He wanted to change the Nidivite. Actually, it's you, Jonah. Preacher, it is you. You are going about preaching, but it is you. God wants to change. You have been preaching for long with bad character. Bad 
bad manners, anger, jealousy, malice, pride, immorality, covetous. It is the mercy of God. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. The Bible tells us in verse 5 So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, east side of the city. and there met him a boot and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord God prepared a guard and made it to come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So, Jonah was exceeding glad of the God. But God prepared a womb when the morning rose the next day and he smote the God that it withered. And it came to pass when the sun did rise did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said it is better for me to die than to live come preacher Jonah if you die with this bad character You've always been said, I beg her to die. You even you even said prophesy and hey, let me die where I rest. Do you know where your bad manners will take you to? Is there rest for a bad man? Do you does a bad man have a good end? Why are you always talking about dying? Always full of complaint. Always full of murmuring. This has been none of you. The merciful God, if it were not for his mercy, you would have never been alive. If it were not for his mercy, you would have not been here. Jonah be, became angry even to die. Let's ask him question again. Let's 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 repeat. Let's say those words that God spoke to Jonah. Can we read verse 9 together? Are you there? Yeah. Let's go. One, two, go. And God said to Jonah, Do not thou well to be angry for the God? <laughs> Can you see the toughness of a man that is answering God? A preacher. The madness of this man was so much that he forgot was God, or he didn't understand God again. Can you see this man? Bad manner that God even suffers from your bad manner. God suffers reproach. God's respect is not completely given to him. You're bad. You're not representing him well. Now, God wanted to work out the transformation of Jonah, the sanctification of Jonah, the deliverance of Jonah from the power of sin. Was Jonah's name in the book of life at this time? Can you help me say no? Many preachers preach and their names are not in the book of life. If it were not for mercy. Now, can you see how God followed to bring Jonah back to senses? Let's go and see. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the God, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein 
are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle Jonah woke up as a man that was sleeping that was the end of anger destructive anger in the life of Jonah his understanding came to him the Bible says anger rested in the bosoms of who? fools Jonah was delivered from foolishness the Lord said come this God were well, you the one who created it how long did you get did you find, see it 24 hours Nineveh created every human being that is there I created them and they have been there for so many generations they have been there from generations to generations and there is much cattle. The people that are in Nineveh are 120,000 persons. Why are you angry that I saved them? Now, you wanted Nineveh destroyed. A womb destroyed a God that you didn't make it grow. And you are angry at the destruction of the womb. And me, I saved human beings. And you are angry at the salvation of human beings. Jonah, your problem is anger. Oh, reasonable anger. Wicked anger. The man came back to himself. Recover yourself. I said, recover yourself. In this meeting, you will recover yourself. All those iniquities of your life that you've been carrying about with the service of God God brought you here to speak to you everybody say Lord speak to me if you open yourself to God you will be in heaven see Jonah repented indeed from anger stubborn heart Jonah now speaks from heaven you will come out of your state the Lord shall save you the Lord shall change you the Lord shall deliver you he will make Jonah a new man and now God is still in the book of life has brought you here to do the same thing the Lord wants to speak to you Yes. You know, you have been asking for God's glory. You have been praying, God, I want to know you. It's not that you do not know him, but you say, no, I want to increase. My heart is crying. My heart is crying and longing. I want to know you more. Do you know that God had that prayer? My sister, do you know that God heard your prayer? Yes. Brother, do you know that God heard your prayer? Yes. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. We read verse 17 to 22. The Bible tells us here, saying, said unto Moses I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight and I knew thee by name and he said I beseech thee show me thy glory everybody read verse 18 read verse 18 one two go Now, you say it as your own say. That's you now praying to God. One, two, go. Say it. Say, 
your heart looked for the answer to that prayer you prayed it for long the answer has come I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy and he said thou canst not see my face for there shall no man see me and leave By me and thou shalt stand upon a rock and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock and will cover thee and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by and I will take away mine hand and thou shalt see my back parts but my face shall not be seen you know this hunger and thirst you have been having for God is what makes you grow is what improves you is what gives you more glory of God God has promised blessed are ye who hunger and thirst and righteousness for ye shall be filled so it's a good thing when Moses Moses that did not know God he saw him in fire in the, in the bush burning with fire he went with him to Egypt and did all the miracles of Egypt and had been walking with him by him they crossed the Red Sea many miracles have been done by this time but there is yearning I want to know you show me your glory that's a good yearning you are for a good thing the Lord said I will answer that now he said i'm going to put you in a place i'm going to take you to a place and keep you in that place then i will pass by and i will introduce myself to you the lord is going to introduce himself to you you will know god more here your understanding your knowledge and wisdom in God and Christianity there shall be a promotion yeah. the end in verse 30, chapter 34 verse 1 my, chapter 34 I read from verse 5 to verse 8 and the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord that God was introducing his person to Moses now we will read that introduction together verse 6 and verse 7 where to go and the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God merciful and gracious long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth keeping mercy for thousands forgiven iniquity and transgression and sin and clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon please microphone amen the Lord was passing by 
Moses. Now, he was introducing himself. Remember, he put his hand upon Moses' face. So that the Moses could not see his face. They, and he was, as he was passing. He said, Moses, the person passing you now is the Lord. That is Jehovah. That Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, and capital D. That's Jehovah. The person passing you now is self-existent. He, I existed by myself. I am the Lord. The Lord God. Moses, the one passing by now is the self-existent that created all things. God is creator. The self-existent personality, divine personality that created everything. Moses, this is your creator that is passing now. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful. Hey, he came to tell his characteristics. Merciful. Animals. God, they are mercy from him. Animals show mercy. They got it from him. Higher animals. Ma got it from him. He is the originator of mercy. So, mercy originated from me. Have confidence. Moses, trust in me. I am ever ready to forgive you. The Lord. The Lord God. Merciful and gracious. Moses, I show kindness. I do things of my kindness. I may not bother about your qualification. I may not ask you to give me certificate. Exactly. When he came to die, were we qualified for his death? Merciful and gracious. It's of his own accord. Not because we have done any act of righteousness. But of his own accord, he died for our sins. So that is me, Moses. I show kindness. You know what you did in Egypt? Yeah, I still pursued you and called you and gave you this great work. Of what, what did you do for me? It's my grace. It's my kindness. So go and Moses, I'm going now. Merciful and gracious. Long suffering. I am patient. I am patient. Moses, is there any human being that has seen more than Satan? In case you are murmuring constantly about this, you stubborn people. And you think you have come to the point, I can't forgive them again. What about Satan? They are patient. I can be patient with people. So, don't be, don't, don't be exercising anger on them. Moses, don't be angry. Don't think that you have exhausted me. I know we, my wisdom requires judgment, but I am merciful. Even in my judgment, I remember mercy. Merciful and gracious. Long suffering. Very patient. Very, very patient God. The God you can trust. And abundant in goodness and truth. In fact, it's like if you come to me. I am like an ocean of goodness. I am abundant in goodness and truth. You will find truth in me. I show goodness and kindness. I pour it out. I want you to say, Oh Lord, pour your kindness upon us. Pour your kindness upon us. That is your God. That is our God. Very good. Very good. Merciful. Full of goodness and truth. Truth. God has for truth. Ah. <laughs> he is truth. He is truth. God 
hope is truth. His ways are true. His ways are truth. That's why you must learn his truth to enjoy him. For goodness goes with truth. Yes. He's so generous. Very, very generous. Keeping mercy for thousands. I, I can keep mercy. Wonderful. Show kindness to thousands. And he said, Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Wonderful. Three. But they are referring to one person. One thing. Iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin. What is transgression? Sin. What is sin? sin? God gathers all kinds of evil that can be done and say I can forgive them. Fullness of evil. Fullness of wickedness. Fullness of failure. Fullness of fall I can forgive. As a man will come to me, as long as a woman will come to me and ask it, I pour it out. I forgive daughter and I cast your sin into the depth of the sea, and I will not remember it over you uh, of, upon you anymore. That's the God you serve, and I am so happy that your sin has been taken. Because we're in his presence. Don't fear. He will handle it. You will find peace. Hallelujah. This is God. This is God. That's why you should be free. free. Have confidence in God. Why are you living in fear? Why are you always in fear? Oh, you're falling. God will handle your fall. He did it in Jonah. He will do it in your life. He continued to describe himself to Moses. Yes, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children up to the third and to the fourth generation in case somebody wants to play over me because I am kind because I am gentle because I am forgiven I forgive sin in case somebody wants to play over me and is not sincere in his repentance is not sincere in his confession is not complete in his confession ah i will bring judgment upon him his children will suffer part of the judgment his, his, his children to the second generation will suffer that judgment his children to the third and fourth generation will suffer from that judgment to tell you I hate iniquity I'm a holy God I hate iniquity of those people that hate me eh, your father did the same thing you're doing it, receive it oh, okay your great grandfather did this thing against me oh, you're doing it, receive it I transfer judgment he told Ahab, I will wipe away Ahab and all that pieced against the wall. Every male child shall be wiped away completely of the family of Ahab. That's God. So don't play. Seek help. Don't abuse it. Otherwise, he is an angry God. When he sees that people despise him, 
the Lord will introduce himself to you here. Yeah. You are going to, your eyes will open. Yeah. I'm telling you, your eyes will open. Yeah. Your face will shine. Yeah. Uh-uh. Who will see that light and not reflect it? Who will see that eternal light and never reflect it? You will hear when you go back and people will be seeing you. You know when Moses came down from the mountain, they were seeing like this. Eh? They were covering their face because of the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord will overtake you. Yeah. Say, so just listen to everything. Yes. You know, God said you should come. Wow. He has made some observations. He wants to speak to you about it. He has made some observations. And he wants to speak to you about these observations. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. Yes. That's what God is doing. From verse 9. From verse 9 to verse 11. I, John, also am your brother and companion in tribulation. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Was in the isle that is called Patmos. For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the last day and had behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what does yet? write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Laodicea and Philadelphia and unto Laodicea you see it was a vision that came to John. It was in the last day. John was banished to the island of Patmos. It was a conference the Lord called him for. He used some people to transport him there. Although those people were not believers. Just as you, you, people who pilot you, are they all believers? Those who drive you in the vehicles, are they all believers? So, they were doing it in the name of persecution, but God sent them to carry John for a conference. And you are here. Please, welcome your brother and sister for this conference. The Lord brought him. The Lord brought her. Whichever means you used whether by persecution or by friend, for friendship it is the Lord that has brought you here and you have come for a conference hallelujah then the Lord says I have made observation about my church I have made observation about my church I want to discuss it with you it's paining me it's disturbing me majority of my people are gone they have left my path false teachers Jezebels the Nicolaitans have taken over my church my church into money, they follow the word of Balaam. They've got the word of the world. It's paining me. And I know how they began. I was watching them. I 
followed them step by step I knew their works how they did it before but the church in Ephesus have left their first love they have left their first love now but there are very few just two over seven that are standing just two of them over seven very few and even then they are persecuted they are persecuted I want to open your eyes so you can see because I want to give you message for my church I want to give you a message come that's why he said it's because I want to show you back to my church that I brought you here I want to give you a message for them therefore listen very well to what I will say here be attentive to all I am going to cause you to hear so will come from the pulpit directly some will not come from the pulpit because I use every means available to honor my name be consecrated be committed open your eyes and see you will see many things about my church you will hear many things about my church then I will send you to go to speak to them I will give you a message that's why you're here is that clear you were sponsored to this conference your office sent you here because there is something they want you to learn to deliver to them your community sent you here because there is something you are going to learn to take back to them your church sent you here because you have come here to receive and take back your family sent you here whoever helped you to be here the Lord passed through them to assist you because he wanted you you are going to hear his voice my sheep hear my voice are you a sheep? are you a sheep? you will hear the voice of your shepherd he is the master and we are his servants he has brought us here to hear because he has assignment for us and he said Pay keen attention. Listen very well. Don't give in to sleep. Control your stomach. Although you like eating, control your stomach. You sleep a lot. You are the type that when you go into sleeping, normally you sleep from 8 and wake up 9 o'clock, 13 hours. If you go that you do that business, go will not gain. Don't allow it. God said, open your eyes and see. Because this matter has touched his heart. He's about coming and see the church now. See the church now. Please see well. Are you going to see well? Are you going to be attentive? God is happy with you. He means business for you to be here. You know, there are some things even about you that he has observed. He will let you know about it. Amen. You have been saying, Snatch me, oh God, and know my heart, and see whether there be any evil way. Don't worry, he will tell you. Amen? Amen? Thank you so much now God has a plan and God has program 
concerning your life concerning the people he have set you up to lead concerning your nation concerning the church concerning the world in fact he has a plan for your denominational church God has a plan you know he told you some things and you were asking you wanted to understand those things it's okay come here we will meet together I will give you ample time and I will cause you to understand in the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 4 the Bible tells us here saying I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved and the Lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that read it, it can we read verse 3 together one two go for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry verse Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Plans. The Lord wants to speak about the plans and promises in your life, his own plan and promises. Some things appear to delay. He's going to tell you about it. He may give you the reason why. He's going to assure your faith. That prophecy the Lord will speak about it. That dream that he gave you. The Lord will speak about it. That message that was sent to you. The Lord will speak about it. At the end you will see it Amen. I don't know what he's going to tell you but I know he's going to assure you Amen. I know he's going to strengthen you Amen. I know that that's how God does it that's how he works that's how he works that's how he works brother you're going to see your wife joyful in this conference because of what God is going to tell her here Hannah will go and eat her food Amen I said Hannah will do what? she will go and eat her food and drink her water and her face shall no more be sad Hallelujah. My sister, your husband that has been looking sorrowful, you will be surprised. Watch him during precious when the Lord is tearing precious. You will wonder what has happened. The Lord has spoken many good things to him. He's no more sorrowful. Jabez. The Lord is going to change Jabez. people that have been failed words the Lord is going to meet with them
it with you. Let's just move forward. Now the just shall live by faith. Don't shake. Your God is there to tell you. He will explain. He will reinforce his promise. He may even tell you the day of the time of fulfillment. Maybe, maybe he's going to tell you it's tomorrow. But whichever way he, you will see him. He brought you here to discuss with you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there were some things that happened to you you couldn't explain. That thing remained a mystery up to today. The, the event of your life that rough way life passes you through passes you through rough way the way you were you were handled you have been asking questions up to this day you wondered hmm. God is seeing you today don't worry God will come to you and have discussion with you you will be comforted. Amen. You will be joyful. Amen. Look at it in the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 38, verse 1. Job, chapter 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the wild wind. Go to chapter 42. In chapter 40. Job chapter 40. Verse 6 and 7. They answered the Lord unto Job out of the wild wind and said, Guide up thy lunch now. Like a man, I will demand of thee. And declare thou unto me. Declare that unto me. Verse chapter 42 of Job. Verse 5, verse 6, and verse 10. Chapter 42. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I uphold myself and repent in dust and ashes. In verse 10. Can we read verse 10 together? One, two, go. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The event in the life of Job, he could not understand. was righteous and the Lord busted of it. Job was sacrificing for his children to make sure that their sins should be atoned for interceding for them. Yes! Job was merciful and gracious showing kindness to people. Yes! in the east in righteousness yes yeah, he had friends that knew him knew his turn in righteousness but how did it happen in just a brief moment how were these things arranged how did they how were they so sudden in the life of Job one after another one after another including the children he interceded for he would, he would sacrifice for those children still died all of them not one was left what's happening his sheep go his camels go his cattle plus the servants what is this arrangement that they, there was always one person left to come and tell him always one person left to come and tell what 
was happening? Come, go. What have you got? What's happening? Go, go. And there's no voice from God. No voice. God is quiet. Go. Are you the one doing this? So you are, you are against me? What did I do? Oh, that we could go to court with God. That I will speak and hear what he will say. Because I know, his, I know my life. I know my ways. Sickness has taken over me. What is happening? Job talked. There was no voice from heaven. He prayed. There was no clear answer. No explanation. No prophecy. No revelation. No word. What's wrong? What's happening? Until his friends came. And sat with him. Three friends. They sat with him and never talked for seven days. They were just watching him like this. Should I cry before these people? Should I tell them my innocency? Should I tell them I didn't commit any sin? Should I do what? what come? What happened? From where? He sat down. He was looking pitiful in the in, in ashes until after seven days the, friend, the, the demon has charged the battery of his friends they were strong enough to talk now and they said is that not the report of hypocrisy we have been telling you about we have known it that he that plays the hypocrite if the truth shall be discovered of him, God shall punish him. God shall kill his children. God shall kill all his animals. God shall bring him to poverty. Job said, Hey, miserable comforter. Who asked you to come here? Did I tell you that I'm looking for your comfort? Ah, ah. Come. If, what do you know that I don't know? What righteousness do you know that I don't know? I'm passing through an unexplainable case. I cannot understand. My body is smelling before my wife. My servant can never hear me anymore. I, you, are, you are coming to tell me I'm a sinner, I'm a hypocrite? God knows my heart, knows my life. The friend said, look at you. Instead of saying that God should forgive you, you are still thinking, adding sin to sin. He said, Kai, miserable comforters. You people are, you are miserable comforters. What God job has been asking? Are you job here? The Lord is coming to talk with you. <laughs> the Lord will talk with you. And that talk shall end up with power in your life. The God of restoration shall talk with you. The God of revival shall talk with you. The God of double blessing shall talk with you. Your family will come back to your life. Your ministry will come back to your life. The Lord will teach you. There shall be revival in your life. There shall be revival in the work of your hand. There shall be revival in your ministry. People shall come in again. They shall flow to your church again. I'm telling you, you shall be precious once more. He's coming to meet with you here. Are you ready for him? The Lord will talk with you. He's going to comfort you. Ha! All those that ran away from Job started coming back. Things shall take a new turn in your life. He said he wants to speak with you. He's going to speak, speak. I'm sure he's going to speak peace. He's going to speak comfort. He's going to speak promotion. He's going to speak revival. I don't know, but in the case of Job, God didn't appear to explain anything to Job. He just said, okay. Uh, he, he discussed about his creative power and ability. Creative power. Maybe Job. This power I have to create all these great animals. Could I not have protected all that came to you? But I allowed my wisdom to play. I allowed my wisdom. 
you will not be aware job but record will show later that the contest between me and satan i wanted to show show you to satan that your love for me is original you are finished it has, the matter has finished let's go get back those things you are looking for I'm giving you glorious children the Lord bless your life <laughs> yes you know we are in end time now the Lord is raising up end time prophets and prophetess and apostles and teachers and pastors the Lord is raising up end time evangelists and he's coming to speak to them here he's coming to talk to you about the end time to get you prepared get you involved get to moving I'm telling you the Lord will do wonders in your life in the book of Daniel chapter 9 Daniel chapter 9 the Bible tells us what God will do that's why he called you here what the almighty God will do in your life that is the reason why let's read from verse 19 oh lord hear oh lord forgive oh lord hacking and do dishonor for thy own sake oh my god for thy city and thy people I called by thy name and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God yet whilst I was speaking in prayer even the man Gabriel whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning being caused to fly swiftly touched me about the time of the evening oblation and he informed me and talked with me and said oh Daniel I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding at the beginning of thy supplications the commandments came forth and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. The Lord has precious people that He has brought them here. Maybe not to repent because they have repented already. Maybe not to be righteous because they are righteous already. They are well beloved and He wants to talk with them. He wants to show them something. He wants to give them wisdom and understanding. He wants to open their, in fact, he wants to brush their cobwebs. He wants some scales to fall from their eyes. He wants to anoint them with spiritual eye salves so they can see further. He wants to cause some deep understanding to them concerning the works of God in this generation. He wants to tell them about the end time. He wants to get them prepared. These are the generals of the end time. He wants to get them prepared. They say, come over. I'm bringing you over here to the Holiness Revival Movement. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. And I'll be talking to generals in that place. Are you here? I say, are you here? Are you here? one of the precious people oh Daniel even well beloved I appreciate you heaven knows about you heaven appreciates your work you are not living for over there 
Because of the precious things, the evangelistic work you're doing. Yeah, the gospel of truth. You're spreading in the world. You're making the Father glad. You're making the Father happy. He wants you to come because He wants to caress you. He wants to rock you. He wants to just rub your head and just wipe your face and talk with you and they put the two of you will laugh and then he will want to strengthen your bones. He will want to pour more spirit in your bones. He will want to pour more blood in your bones. He will want to pour more blood in your bones. The spirit is bringing you brought here for a purpose. He says for a purpose. Therefore, don't say I need no repentance and you became careless. You will miss the will of God. I don't need whole, I am already holy already. And you become careless. He said, No, open your eyes and see. Open your ears and hear. I'm one, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I brought you here for a purpose. I'll fulfill that purpose in your life. Finally, number seven. The Lord needs to correct something. The Lord is giving warning. He brought you here to correct some things in your life. In fact, there's a restitution you're supposed to do. God wants to speak to you about it. There's a course you have taken that is wrong. Brought you here to warn you about that cause. You have taken a direction. That direction is dangerous. Somebody is persuading you into a decision, and that decision is decision of darkness, dangerous for your life. There are things you are doing over there in your life, in your ministry that are against God. You are kicking against the priests you are persecuting Jesus you are actually doing harm to the people of God he brought you here to talk with you he brought you here to talk with you you are actually attacking the works of, the work of God he brought you to show you his power and give you last warning last warning that's why you're here and he's going to speak with you he's going to speak to you in the book of Job chapter 42 Job chapter 42 I read verse 7 yes Verse 7 to verse 8. And it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanah, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends. of me the thing that is right as my servant job have therefore take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant job shall pray for you for him will I accept let I deal with you after your folly. In that, ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. God once is with you. You went about speaking lies, you went about speaking heresies, gossip, backbiting, and evil. You affected the heart of Job. You condemned him. You wounded him. You, you were cooperating with Satan. Satan was bullying Job. 
and used you as a battle axe against him. The man was crying, you were still blowing him. The man was crying and said, No, no, you were blowing him. Take seven bullocks, go to job. Go and apologize to him. You are a woman, very tough to your husband. Very tough. The Lord has brought you here to warn you. You are affecting that man's work. You are affecting the calling of God over that man. You are affecting that man. You are destroying God's work in his hand. You are discouraging him. The Lord is warning you. Go back and apologize to your husband. Otherwise, he, God, will handle you by himself. He! For which way will you be tough to God? He knows how to handle you. If God gives you a sickness, will you survive? All your shouting will just end. Are you waiting for sickness? If God causes armed robbers to clear those money, that money you're boasting about, what about that? You're, bra- you're bragging about for money? God, just go in and clear up all you have. You will come down. Because mo- you're standing on top of money, that's why you're taller than your husband. That's why you cannot hear. You cannot pay. The Lord has brought you here to warn you. He has brought you here. Go back and humble. Go back and obey. The husband is the head of the wife. God has brought you here, minister. The way you are treating your members. How you extract money from those people. Some of them, their children have left school now. You have carried all their money. They are coming to God. Whatever power you are using, nobody can tell. When you speak, the last cobble, they bring it out. The last thing in their hand. Even the transfer money to go back home after church, they gave you and begin to trade home and reinforce on them on the way. They say, God is our pastor. That's why God said, bring that man here. God has brought you here. He wants to deal with that thing in your life. He wants to give you warning because of the judgment of God coming on covetous preachers. You are using means. You are using means. You are using means. Your prophecies are lies. The Lord has brought you here. Go back and correct those things. Go back and on. And on Otherwise, I will deal with you as I deal with Satan. That you are persecuting your wife. Your wife must not be righteous. Your wife must not. You treat your wife like a servant. Even her salary, you collect everything. As a man here, there is the higher than the highest. And the highest has called you here now. He has never given that wife for flesh. For, you didn't buy her soul. You paid dowry for the body, not the soul. For all souls are mine. The soul of the man and the soul of the wife. And you want to make the soul of your wife to see? You want to send the soul of your wife out of my heart? I am going to hold you down. I will deal with you except you repent. If the Lord gives you blindness, what will happen to you? Will you move? All this water that I will slap, will you see her face again to slap her? Now, these occultic people, <laughs> this, the Lord brought you purposely, he knows you are in occultism. He knows you are a witch. God knows you are a wizard. He knows you belong to that company. They sent to wherever their Christian program to spoil things. He knew that your name was included among those they were sending to this place. He knew, he knew about that. But he allowed you to come because he
he is going to give you final warning <laughs> is it God you are thinking you can do that is it this place that God is raising up by himself that the devil has employed you that you should come and pull it down you are already The Lord said, Be careful. I brought you here for last warning. The people say, I, I, why, why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a thing? The kings of the earth have made themselves together and the rulers take counsel against the Lord, against the Almighty, and say, Let us tear them asunder. Let's tear up this kingdom. God is laughing in heaven. I think God is laughing in heaven. I said God is laughing in heaven. He's just making up and he's laughing. Because the judgment of God will carry you up. The power of God will take over you. The ground that you stand on shall sink you down. But it's giving you last warning. Everybody let's rise up upon our feet. God wants to speak to you. Tell him to speak to you. speak to you.
God wants to meet his plans and programs. Move on to you. Something to say. God has something to say. Listen, listen. Pay good attention. For God has something to say. Do you hear me? to say brother God has something 
to say to you, sister, listen, listen, pay attention, for God has something to say to you, brother. Rapt attention throughout this meeting. To speak, you shall not hear it. Speak, oh Lord, I will hear. Speak, oh Lord, I will hear. Information has come to us. It's like the announcement that the president is going to make his broadcast. And the nation is attentive to hear him. So we are attentive to hear you, Lord. Oh, not most hard. Your word has lied for us, O oh God of mercy. You are going to speak peace to us, Amen. that which will give us peace. Amen. You are going to speak forgiveness unto us. Amen. You are going to speak blessings unto us. Amen. You will speak promises unto us. You will speak rebuke because of our evil ways so that we can change and escape your divine judgment. All the works of God, the ways of God are mercy and truth. We thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, prepare us for the Father's voice. Prepare us for the Father's voice. Let we stand beside you. We would hear the voice of our Master. We can be seated.
We expect everybody to have his, to have his badge or her badge. Because if they don't see you with a badge, it means you are not registered. And they can meet you anywhere and get you registered. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production, and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe
Oh, uh-huh. 